All right. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. Gervonta Davis says, where you at, Shakur? As Shakur Stevenson <clears throat> goes silent after their team, Gervonta's team says, we're sending you a contract. <clears throat> the problem with the contract is going to be that it's going to be take it or leave it. And let's talk about what that's going to mean in this video, in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, we're going to talk about the 135 pound division and the biggest fight in boxing that can be made, or at least the best fight that I want to see in boxing. And that is between two of the most amazing fighters in the game, Gervonta Davis, the 135 pound WBA champion and the three division, former three, uh, the current WBC champion, three division champion, Shakur, Stevenson. Now, if you've not been familiar with what's going on on the channel, we've had Shakur on the channel in the last um, week or so. We've had Gervonta Davis's trainer on the channel over the last week or so, both Kenny Ellis and the head trainer, Calvin Ford out of B&B Gym. So we have a pretty good idea about what's going on with this fight. Uh, the last word, though, is that Gervonta Davis tweeted and deleted. Where you at, Shakur? What's going on? I think he might have said something about Keyshawn Davis, too. I didn't get to see the tweet because it was already gone, but a whole lot of people came by the live stream and said it was there, so no reason not to believe it's there. What's that about? Well, we're going to talk about it, but before I do, I need for you to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon. Also, please, for everybody that knows me, that comments with me all the time about, you know, in the comment section and on Twitter and on Instagram, I have a new personal YouTube channel where I'm going to talk about things that are not related to boxing. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. There's going to be topics here and there that you're really going to enjoy. You're probably not going to enjoy everything, but you know what it is. Please subscribe to M.H. Blackwell. That's capital M, capital H space Blackwell YouTube channel. And I'm going to put a link right there uh, for you guys to see and subscribe. But let's get into this. And shout out to Barbara Deep. Shout out to Matty Yo. All right. Gervonta Davis is going to give Shakur Stevenson a take it or leave it offer. And what do I mean by a take it or leave it offer? They're going to put it on a piece of paper. They're going to send it. He's going to sign it or he's not going to sign it. One or the other. If he doesn't sign it, they're going to move on and fight somebody else. That's Gervonta Davis's team. If he does sign it, they're going to fight Shakur. Now, what I expect to happen is for them to send something to Shakur and Shakur not to sign it and Shakur to take a couple more fights to build his name up a little bit, get more steam behind the fight so it can be a huge fight and then they'll fight. That's what I believe. However, believe this. When Gervonta Davis sends that contract to Gerv to Shakur Stevenson at either this time or the next time that they do it, because, again, like I'm saying, I do believe that they're going that Shakur is going to let that fight grow a little bit. I don't think that that's something he expected to get next, even though he said he wants to get it next. He definitely told uh Kenny Ellis that he would be available to be next. But with all the things going on with him finding a new promoter, figuring that out, right? I have a suspicion. And the fact that his market value is not as high as he would like it to be going into the fight with Gervonta, that it may be held up. But so at any point in time that this fight's going to happen, it's going to be a take it or leave it offer. And let me tell you why I think that's going to be and why that is going to be the case with Gervonta Davis and very well may be the case with more upper echelon fighters as they move forward. And this is going to be a, me a, get a chance for me to dig about a video that I can't wait to do after this, which is my analysis of the interview that took place between 
Andre Ward and Terrence Crawford, in which, in my opinion, and I know some of y'all think I'm Terrence Crawford haters. Dude, he's the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. But that dude moves funny, 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 funny. He moves funny. And the way that he described what he did with Errol Spence Jr., I'm telling you right now. And his relationship with Al Heyman and what he said about Al Heyman and how he had to go around Al Heyman and convince uh, Errol Spence Jr. to take a deal that Al Heyman didn't want him to take. And Errol said, look, man, let's just get it done to Al. Let me guarantee you this. That will never happen with Gervonta Davis and Gervonta Davis's team. And that having happened to one of the PBC's biggest fighters and that PBC fighter lost, you better believe that the PBC is going to be doubling down. Gervonta Davis is going to be doubling down in the position that he's in and is not going to give you an inch. If you listen to the tone of Calvin Ford, you listen to the f- tone of Kenny Ellis, they're, t- they're, they're telling Shakur Stevenson, look, bro, we got to give you something. You're going to take this and we ain't hear no bickering back and forth about nothing. And that should definitely be their position, seeing as Terrence Crawford is somebody that advises Shakur Stevenson on what he should do with his career. It is to me as somebody that is a regular working American, right? Actually, I don't even think I am a regular working American anymore because I don't get up out of my desk, you know, get out of my bed, put my suit, put my monkey suit on anymore, get on, uh, you know, get up at five o'clock in the morning, get my hair, you know, get my, you know, shave my head, trim my, trim my beard and my mustache, put my suit on, drive the car down to the train station, take the train downtown Chicago, you know what I mean? Walk a couple blocks, get up in that office with a boss, with a boss sitting over here and coworkers over here, knowing full well you under the pressure and anyone and, and several people in this room, if you don't do what you need to do, you can lose your job. You know, that type of job that so many people have that Terrence Crawford somehow does not have a concept of. <laughs> because if you listen to what he complained about in that interview, man, oh my God, what a nice life, Terrence. What a nice life. You get to work five hours a day, make multi millions, make millions and millions of dollars, take care of your family, be famous. You have people that are bidding to figure out how they can give you millions of dollars to do what you do, but you still find a way to be upset. It's amazing to me. But anyway, sorry, man. I'm sorry. That shit took it took me back. I was like, man, how oh, I had to remember you're 36. This is from a 55 year old. Oh, you're 36. I got it. You're still young. You're still young and don't understand, bro, that everything that Terrence Crawford complained about in that interview was something that everybody goes through every single solitaire in their real life, whether they're a bus driver or they're a doctor or whatever they're doing. Anybody that has to rely upon somebody else to pay them money. But anyway, his attitude about, hey, man, I am uh, I'm going to get what I'm worth and it's my way or the highway. Or I'm not going to fight this guy if you don't give me exactly what I want and all of that. Listening to the way that he described that 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 how his relationship with Al Heyman and how Al Heyman knew more than he did at the beginning. But he had to learn and catch up and how he eventually got the best of that situation and still crapped on Al Heyman. Bro, look, man, if Shakur is Shakur is not going to have the opportunity to do that with Gervonta Shakur, if you listen to the tone, they're saying, look, man, we're about to go get this money. You're not on our level. Do not get confused about who's selling tickets and who's doing what. We don't care about your championship at 126. We don't check care about your two champions at 130. We don't care about your championship at 135. Strictly speaking, somebody could argue that Shakur Stevenson is more accomplished in championship belts than Gervonta is. That's not going to make a difference when it comes to that negotiation and getting that fight done. And all of the king's horses and all of the king's men can complain about it. But at the end of the day, this situation where you have somebody that bites the hand that feeds you, advising you, could be advising other people to bite the hand that feeds them. Nah, no, thank you, bro. Gervonta Davis is going to say, here's your contract. Shakur, you like this contract? Do you like this contract? No, I don't like it. Well, okay, give me that contract back. Go fight somebody else. Because I'll be doggone if I sit up here for three months talking to you, holding up my holding up my entire stable. 
for you at the for you to be negotiating on a plan B the entire time and jump out the last minute like Terrence Crawford did. Man, wild stuff in my personal opinion. And if you can't tell, man, I'm telling you, I've been in negotiations, a lot of negotiations, bro. I've had a lot of jobs. I'm a grown man. And I'm telling you something about prof professional athletes that kill me is those dudes. And I've met them. They don't live in the real world. And Terrence Crawford is not living in the real world the way that he was talking in that interview. And I hope it does not rub, rub off on Shakur Stevenson. He, but don't worry about it, man. I'm going to talk about this in a specific video. But I, I'm just telling you, y'all call me Terrence Crawford haters. I do not hate Terrence Crawford. But I'm telling you, to listen to a young man sound like that, that is that blessed in his life, that have that many people supporting him, and the only thing he can do is complain about the other people? Nah, man, I can't go with that. But anyway... <laughs> Sorry, I had to get into that, man. But look, I think the Gervonta Davis and Shakur fight is going to happen. Shakur Stevenson is probably staying silent because Shakur Stevenson got some sense. If you want to get that fight, you got to get that contract, read that contract, negotiate carefully because Gervonta Davis is willing to fight you. But he's got other situations where he can make more money and multiple other opportunities. It's up to Shakur to nail that fight down and get that fight done if he wants it next. If he doesn't want it next, tell him you don't want it next and tell him you're going to take two fights so that he knows what he's dealing with. You know what you're dealing with and everything is above board. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.